Um, so they're making their way in. Um, so I'll, I'll pause it fairly often um, because we can't actually play the whole thing, as I said. But um, just in this pause screen, you can see the aesthetic. Like, this is so reminiscent of different video games, different, like, sci-fi FPS or, like, RPG, action RPG games we've played. You mentioned Halo. Like, this level 01 uh, design. Um, dead Space as well. Dead Space, it's very yeah, it's right. yeah. Atmospheric. Yeah. You can sort of see the, the design of the soldiers as well like the huge blasters and um i mean it, it's interesting that they still have the old school weapons like uh he yeah. still has his shotgun um which adds another level of realism i think um so i'm not going to play everything so we'll skip through so so we've got um newt we didn't mention newt why did I mention Newt? Yeah, you gotta mention Newt. I gotta mention Newt. <laughs> did I write Newt in my notes? Yes. Um I must have missed that. But they find uh Newt uh during their initial recon of the facility. Soul Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor. So I can't remember how long she's been surviving for, but it's been ages. Um, and she's been hiding out in yeah. the vents and crawl spaces around the facility. Um, and she was sort of reticent to speak to, even speak to Ripley initially, but Ripley sort of um, became this um, improvisational maternal figure. So Ripley is sort of this maternal archetype throughout the film. <clears throat> it's an interesting depiction of motherhood. And sort of this alternative... Um, so she's sort of the ultimate feminine representation, I think, in this film, in terms of her uh, maternal mm. instincts. She sort of just snaps into this <clears throat> role of protector, this ultimate protector, uh, as we'll see uh, by the end of the film. But uh, in this scene, we have uh, Carter J. Burke, the scumbag, <laughs> Gorman, who is another great character. <laughs> As we'll see later on, he has a great scene. Um, so they're sort of looking at the blueprints. I just want to highlight um, something else in this scene. Hopefully it will come up soon. So we'll this one. So, um, <clears throat> so this is one of the genius decisions um, in this film, is having these monitors uh, track the action. So we've got the monitors, but we also have the cameras in the facility as they're getting attacked. Um, so oh, yeah. That's, um, yep. Yeah, the body cameras. It's, yeah, the body uh, cameras. Like yeah. police, police have it today, like yeah. this kind of technology. And yeah. to think that it was used so long ago in, <laughs> yeah. in a movie, yeah. you think that they would have introduced it, introduced it sometime like a lot sooner like in real life yeah i was thinking that actually in terms of the video games as well like they probably could have had all this stuff in video games back then but they just didn't have the technology probably. yeah definitely um so this is another great um representation of that so we've got the body cams and the also we have a screen for the um their lives the vital signs yeah sure that that's crazy stuff. So also this scene, so we see the architecture of the xenomorphs that's, um, I guess, that they create through their secretions is the implication. Um, so it's interesting that they're sort of walking through these hallways crafted by the xenomorphs. It becomes this alien landscape uh, within uh, a, a, a man-made structure, uh, which sort of adds another layer of mystery and horror to the to the scene yeah i don't want to play too much of this but you can see that their weapons are quite quite large and cool yeah that was um yeah that was some of the things that we loved as children seeing these marines with these huge guns and like yeah. the unique sounding and all the different sounds 
like the yeah. trackers and stuff. The the trackers, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to play the tracker scene. But you can see this still image of Hicks, uh, the helmet, sort of reminiscent of the, you know the Vietnam. Like if you watch Full Metal Jacket, for example, it's sort of this mm. this is this sort of aesthetic. Like if you think of a space marine today, like you think of maybe Warhammer, uh, yeah, and like they're fully kitted out, bodied like suits of armor, and like they're carrying these huge weapons, and hmm. and like this is this is more like um, yeah, like Vietnam era yeah. kind of body armor and stuff, mm. which makes sense co considering when the film was made. So, so this is mm. when. Um, when Ripley says that they need, they can't use their pulse, pulse, pulse rifles. I was about to say plus. Uh, I, I don't, it's a plasma rifles or pulse rifles. It's, I reckon they're it's both pulse, the same thing. Yeah, it's pulse pulse rifles. But there would be plasma, right? If you're gonna be technical about it, like Halo. So you can see that Drake and Vasquez are like stashing their pulse rifle ammo. Later on, even though they're not supposed to. Um, he says, "What he says, he uses harsh language." <laughs> <laughs> That's Apo. So we should talk about Apo. See, he's, he's a great character. Um, mm. He's a leader, and then when he goes down in a, in a second, <laughs> everything goes goes awry. Everything hits the fan at that stage. Oh, oh, this is a good scene. We'll see this. So they come across the eggs or an egg and uh, a face hugger, face hugger the corpses, face hugger corpse. <laughs> so, this, so, yeah, this is such. A great example of the direction, art style, cinematography of this film. Like the like Drake's pointing that way, Vasquez pointing that way, then the alien architecture all around them. Mm. Oh. That's why it's such a great film to rewatch after all these years. Um, oh, and then they encounter the woman who's been cocooned and who's still alive. <laughs> This is scary. Mm. <laughs> like that's a, that's a pretty good jump scare uh, if you're a kid. Um, and so she she has she gets to experience yeah. a chest, chest burst. I remember I remember saying her line all the time as a kid. But I, I still say it now. <laughs> Help me. No, kill me. Oh, kill me. Yeah. Kill me. Wait, let's we'll go back and play that then. Yeah, yeah, from here. This will this will do from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she gets a nice Oh look at that, look at that. Pause. Yeah. So we can get the, the chest burst with the with the fire. A pine with the flamethrower. Mm. Yeah, so they got flamethrower shotguns. Pulse rifles and pistols as well. I am pistol is, yeah. So that's a a roasted face hugger for your entertainment. Oh, is a uh, chest burst though? I mean chest burst, jeez. <laughs> okay, this is also a great scene where the, the walls start moving and they realize there's mm -hmm. universe all around them. This is awesome. That, that, like that. I'll go back. Like how the wall just moves. Like you see that the tail and then everything comes out. Like that's just awesome filmmaking. Like the just the sound effects of the, the motion detectors oh, yeah. and stuff going off. It just it's just so atmospheric. It just yeah, we'll sets get, the scene. Yeah, we'll probably get a better example of the motion detectors later especially in this other scene where i shouldn't get ahead of myself but um it's all the xenomorphs coming out of nowhere a goes down everyone flips out 
I think it's, because, yeah. it's pretty much it's pretty much Gorman's fault as well. Because yeah. Ripley, she could see what's happening. Even Burke could see what's happening, and uh, he was kind of just deer in the <laughs> headlights. So Burke was yeah, just like, so I, I just I just need a specimen to take back to Yuchani. <laughs> Because Burke doesn't care about he could lose everybody as long as he gets like a specimen, but like he'll sacrifice everyone. No, but um, he'd still need somebody to get off there though. Yeah. Like just to stay alive. But I guess he would have Bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so Gorman, we get the impression that Gorman so it, when they're doing the drop ship scene from before, Gorman says it's his second um drop. Second drop. So basically his second mission in real life. So he's extremely um, inexperienced. And I think Burke deliberately did that. So uh, oh, I think yeah. Burke deliberately chose Gorman so he could like stuff up the mission. and the beat the Yeah, I never, never thought of that. Yeah, definitely now. And so Ripley takes command of the APC, which is a really cool vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we never really talked about the vehicles in this yet. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a really big, heavy, militaristic, like it's oh, another, gigantic. That's another thing that we ate up as children. We just loved this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a great scene um, where Drake goes down. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so Drake, th this is a really tragic scene. Uh, it's always a tragic scene because Drake's such a great character and he's good buddies with um, Vasquez. So Vasquez, like, blows away the alien and then he gets sprayed by the, um, by the acid and then, like, burns everything. And then... Um, then it's a great scene where um, where Hicks takes out this alien. <laughs> this is awesome. This scene. <laughs> Eat this. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hudson gets uh, gets burned. Gets the acid splash. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, and then uh, Ripley. Gets out of there, burning, and then she runs over the xenomorph, which is really cool. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. I like um, a cockroach. Yeah, I like the scene where Hicks sort of calms her down. Oh, um, that's really cool. And see, that's sort of the the beginning of their sort of this type of relationship they have uh, in the film. <laughs> 